it's a real pleasure to be at this great university, to be in Leeds, and to be back in Yorkshire. And it's a real privilege to be the warm-up speaker for the leader best equipped, best qualified, be the, to be the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Keir Starmer. The leader, the leader that will take this country into the future. And it's also a pleasure to give a vote of thanks uh, to Tracy Rabin, whose spectacular success in just 18 months as mayor proves the central case that our commission is making today for the biggest transfer of power out of Westminster and Whitehall to the localities. And it's the biggest transfer of power that our country has seen. Now, today's report is not a one-man report. It is a 12-member commission report. And I want to thank the members of the commission sitting in the front row here for all the work they do, have done, representing every region and every nation of our country. Thank you very much for what you have done. For today, what Labour is doing, we are ditching a century of centralisation. We are calling a halt to the over-centralisation of power at the centre that has brought us conservative sleaze and conservative scandal. And we are ending the long era of the man in Whitehall somehow knowing best. Now, start from our faith that instead of developing some of the potential of only some of the people in some areas of the country, we can create a united kingdom that develops all of the potential of all people in all areas of the country. And identified in our report are 288 new economic clusters, 200 of them outside London, in digital, environmental, life science, advanced manufacturing, and creative industries. These are the future engines of growth. They cover every city and every region. They are employment hotspots capable of creating tens of thousands of new high-paying jobs around our country. And we show today how mayors and local economic partnerships and local authorities can create the supportive local environment. And so first of all, to link the jobs people need to the companies who need them, we propose 638 job centres transferred from inflexible central control down to local control. To match local skills to local employment needs, the devolution of 200 colleges of education to local control, to finance research and investment urgently needed across this country, and to bridge the regional equity gap facing growing firms, the British Business Bank will be transformed into the British National and Regional Bank, and to build regional transport and infrastructure, we propose joint ventures with the European Investment Bank. But to secure the irreversible transfer of wealth, income, and opportunity that we want to see, we also need an irreversible transfer of power. Past devolution settlements, as Tracy has just described, have left the centre unreformed. So to ensure the right powers are in the right places, we must first stop the wrong powers being wielded by the wrong people in the wrong places. And so the new Britain needs a new Westminster, and we need a new Whitehall. In recent years, as you all know, an unreformed centre has been exposed as out of date, out of touch with local needs, out of its depths when it tries to micromanage local events, and all too often out of control. Conflicts of interest, the misuse of power, the abuse of patronage, ethics so unacceptable that this government has lost all its recent ethics advisors. So we've not just to change who makes the decisions, we've got to change the way decisions are made. Now the starting point of cleaning up our politics is setting forward a mission statement of what the United Kingdom is for. These are our obligations to each other to deliver free universal health care, end poverty, build a sustainable environment, have strong defence and guaranteed security. And with that are new rules so that public servants will always serve the public. Enforced by an anti-corruption agency that we propose to investigate wrongdoing, guided by an integrity and ethics commission as proposed by Angela Rayner for day-to-day -day monitoring of standards in public life, and so that it is clear that the era of self-regulation at the centre is over, a citizen's jury representing the public undertaking a regular review of standards in public life, backed up by a ban on all foreign funding of British politics and an end to MPs' second jobs. So we need a clean-up, but we also need a clear-out. 
50,000 civil servants transferred out of London to save £200 million and the first 12 of many agencies that are also candidates of dispersal to save millions of pounds more to the benefit of uh, all the proposals uh, that Rachel Reeves is making. The replacement of the indefensible eight, 830 member House of Lords with a smaller democratic second chamber, which would be an assembly of the nations and regions that would lose its right to delay ordinary legislation for a year but assume a new function to protect the Constitution. Our message is opportunities for all, unfair privileges for no one. And to ensure we work together in future, we're going to end the standoff between local and national politics with a new Council of the United Kingdom chaired by the Prime Minister to examine issues of common concern to all parts of the country. Now in 2016, the British people were promised they would take back control. But it's not the people but the old conservative establishment that took back control. And millions of people, both leave and remain voters, still feel neglected, ignored, forgotten, invisible to the powers that be, and often left with the feeling that they're being treated as second-class citizens. So as we make clear, Labour is not the old establishment in waiting. It is a new government in waiting, ready to transform Britain. Now, after years of moving apart, devolution in Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, and then centralisation in England, we are now all talking about empowering local communities. And with a detailed plan to make the UK work for Scotland and Wales, as well as for the regions, we tell both yes and no voters that we can reunite the country. The issue now is no longer independence versus the status quo in Scotland, but change within the UK to benefit Scotland versus change by leaving the UK, which would do damage to Scotland. And so I believe today we can give people hope. Removing the dead hand of centralisation, we are proposing that there'll be a government not just of the people and for the people, but a government by the people. For there is a basic truth upon which we build all the recommendations of our report that you will see in detail today. And again, I want to thank all members of the Commission for the work they have done. Wherever you go in Britain, there is talent yet to be developed, ability still to be realised, endless potential waiting to be fulfilled. And conscious of this huge gap today between the Britain we have and the Britain we have it in our power to become, I look forward to a new Britain where there is equality and opportunity and fairness in outcome. A new Britain led by the Labour Party, a new Britain led by Keir Starmer, whom I introduce to you now. Thank you very much.